The focus for today is that Tesla's current chipset that they've developed exceeds the capability of NVIDIA's top of the line computers. And so we're kind of impressed and blown away by this and wanted to share via an interview with David, one of our resident experts on what all this means. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. Um, we also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the show and like better ideas on trading and investing, we'd be uh, please join us on Patreon. And please like and subscribe for more shows like this. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss, miss anything. So one of the things that happened is that we started reading pretty heavily on what the reviews were of AI Day. And it seemed that a lot of the experts weren't that enamored with the robot and Elon's plans for it. And I looked at it and you know my thought process on it was that Elon has a habit of getting into things and getting results other people don't. So I felt like it was really hard to assess the whole robot introduction because we need time for it to play out and then you could either pan it or say it was a great idea. I'm thinking of the Cybertruck and the amount of people that hated it out the box and all of a sudden all these people are making reservations for it. So we'll see how that plays out. Today's talk is really focused on the computing side of this discussion. When I was in like the seventh and eighth grade, I had a good buddy of mine and we used to have snowball fights. And one of the things that used to happen or I developed as a technique, I would say, is to actually make two snowballs and throw one very high and the other one right on spot low. And while he was watching the higher snowball, the lower snowball would hit him. And that's applicable in this case because as you know, Elon made most of the presentation about the robot with the dance, etc., and really didn't uh, focus on what Tesla has achieved in computing and how revolutionary it is and how if in fact they execute what they already have an example of and build the chips for it, in essence, he's gonna change the computer industry and add a whole new uh, large base of revenue to the company in the process. So we kind of look forward to your taking time to listen in on our conversation with David. We're gonna end after he finishes his comments and so I just wanted to encourage to remind you uh, to take a look at our health tips below. And uh, I'm confident you'll find what he has to say useful in your understanding of Tesla and where it's going. And I'm really excited to be able to present information that's other than the negativity that we've seen. The other thing I wanted to note is this is a copyrighted broadcast. You're not authorized to use any of the material from this show uh, without permission. And so that's a reminder, please keep your channel. We'll keep ours and work hard to grow that uh, by working hard for interviews as well as research to get it done. Thanks again for joining us. And without further ado, let's jump into our uh, interview to find out how and why Tesla is now beating all the big chip companies, including and especially NVIDIA with what they're doing. Hi, man. Uh, you're a software god, and uh, I've been interviewing different friends who are software experts, and I wanted to get your opinion of the robot. Uh -huh. So, you know, people have declared Moore's Law dead, right? Mm -hmm. The continual expansion of um, computing power. Mm -hmm. And... Intel has tried to kill Moore's Law, mm -hmm. right? They didn't want to have to deal with constantly having to figure out how to make faster and faster chips mm -hmm. and how to, how to make faster and faster computing. AI Day just completely changed that. AI Day said, here's how to make faster computers. Here's how to do it so that you can scale it infinitely. And that kind of takes Tesla and puts it in the, the chip manufacturing realm at the top of the industry. Hmm. 
Wow. And nobody has seen that yet. So, right? c- c- I mean, That's obviously. Like resurrected Moore's Law in a major way. Wow. So Intel doesn't want Moore's Law to continue because um, because they don't want to endure the cost of doing so? Is that your It's thought? a huge R&D expense, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, Tesla has gone and said, hey, look at this. We can continue Moore's Law indefinitely at this point. You know, they're, they're introducing... A uh, current system, and they say, and they're saying, "Hey, we have designs for one that's ten times more powerful." It's hmm. going to be out in a few years, a couple of years, next year, I think they were saying, or a year after. Mm-hmm. But you know, in the midst of this chip shortage, which is kind of strange at this point, because the chip shortage should have solved itself in about anywhere from six weeks to six months, mm-hmm. right? The basic problem. In, started when Austin or when Texas electrical grid shut down and they had to shut down the the um, the fat plants mm-hmm. but you know it spiraled out of control from there and a whole bunch of companies are trying to take advantage of the pandemic and say hey we you know we need more money for these chips basically mm-hmm. and that to me is the real chip shortage are, are people trying to, to game the, the pandemic and, and make extra money? Hmm. Um, but in the midst of that, Elon has come out with a, a revamp of Moore's Law that just completely reverses Moore's Law. Mm-hmm. And that is astounding. I mean, that's just, it's stunning to think that, you know, that's where we're at, and that's what's happening. Could you elaborate on why it's stunning? Well, so Tesla is rebranding itself as a robotics and AI company, mm-hmm. um, which analysts are going to go, oh, shit, now we have another thing to deal with that we didn't have to deal with before that we don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but by the way, is that a big deal that they're rebranding? Uh, in that manner. I don't think it, that is a good thing. At least not in the short term. W- why is that? Well, because it's going to, it, you know, we're on Elon rule, um, distraction rule. Mm-hmm. Right? Every three months or so, Elon does, at three or six months or so, Elon does something that looks like it's an enormous distraction. Mm-hmm. And this looks like an enormous distraction. But if you look at what's actually happening, it's gigantic. You know, when when Elon said, you know, we might start a fab, a fab, he's not doing it because of the chip shortage. He's doing it because, hey, look at them. They've <laughs> they've exceeded the capabilities of any chip manufacturer, right? How so how really how are they? How how is it exceeded? So, on AI Day, Tesla laid out this is how he, how we could make a computer that is faster than anything else that's ever existed. Mm-hmm. And they did that by by making a, a by introducing a new uh, five by five matrix, five twenty five cores CPU for processing AI. Mm-hmm. And then, and they didn't stop there. They went and said, "Okay, so we built this. You know, we powered it and cooled it and put it in this this stack of hardware to to make it a CPU. Mm-hmm. And then we figured out how to put these together on a grid." It's infinite. We can go as far as we want to on this grid. Mm. And so they laid out an architecture that, where they can build essentially an infinitely powerful computer. 
Mm. And then they said, and our next designs are going to be about 10 times more powerful than that, and they're going to be out in a, in a year or two. Mm. And so they've, they've completely pushed the envelope on, on chips and, and, and computing mm -hmm. when they did that. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where, you know, they could take one of those 25 by 25 chips or two of them and stick it in place and call it hardware four, full self-driving hardware four. Mm -hmm. And, take what's in the car today and make it probably close to a thousand times more powerful. Wow. Um, and they're saying, you know, we can put this in a, in a, in a, you know, Tesla bot and do the same thing and have a Tesla bot know exactly where it is in space and time. And then be able to address address stuff. My first thought with Tesla bot is, holy crap! You know, a car has four places where it interacts with the universe and moves things and moves itself around, and a Tesla bot has, you know, maybe twenty four, <laughs> but really quite a bit more than that. Um, and the number of things that it, uh, a Tesla bot would have to deal with. I mean, if you look at a, a common house, right? One of the things they did with full self-driving is they made it so that they can estimate the existence of entities that they cannot see, right? Which is kind of kind of huge, right? So if if they're aware of something and it gets obscured by a car, they estimate its location, mm -hmm. um, even though they can't see it even though they, they're not getting any current data on it. Um, and a Tesla bot could do that too, except that, you know, in, in your typical home or factory, you've got thousands of things. I mean, I, I, I keep a pretty well-equipped kitchen. I used to cook a whole lot. Um, and I've probably got, you know, 2,000 pieces of equipment in my cabinets that aren't visible at any given time. And, you know, some of them are, are in the dishwasher and some of them are in the, in the, um, in some transitional state. Um, and keeping track of that and knowing how to manipulate each one of those objects is kind of major, mm -hmm. right? That's not a small job. Mm -hmm. Um, but each one of those, is like a small full self-driving task. And you look at that and think, well, the Tesla bot, that's just overwhelming. But you think, okay, so Tesla is going to produce another version of their supercomputer that's 10 times powerful than, more powerful than their existing supercomputer. And so, yeah, it, it's probably going to be able to, to do that and handle all that. The, the difficult part of that would be training, and they've got all the training material that they need, basically. Hmm. So, switching back here, you talked about Tesla, based on what they're doing, being forced into chip manufacture. Do they have enough mm -hmm. uh, demand for it, you know, to really make that viable? Or can, can they, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Clearly, their cars are going to require a lot of chips. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I'm I'm looking at Giga Berlin and saying, okay, that's two million units of production that they're putting on that they're building out. Mm -hmm. And Giga Austin is five million. So we could be looking at 2023 of nine million vehicles produced. Mm -hmm. Now, for that to happen, the 4680s have got to come online in a major way, and both the battery plants that they're building have to have to work and happen, um, and and you know meet or exceed what they described as battery day. Um, I kind of think that 
Elon's not saying anything about batteries right now because they don't want to say, hey, we've met or exceeded what we said at Battery Day. And we're building these two plants because we know how to do it now. And, you know, stuff is happening. Um, but given, given that Tesla is likely to produce um, 9 million computers a year in the next couple of years, maybe two or three years down the line, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have the demand for um, that would justify building a fab plant. Mm -hmm. Right. So what's, the what's, the, what's the threshold between, um, you know, just buying the chips and actually building them out? In terms of the unit, unit uh, volume use, I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, but but what you're saying is, if you look at nine million vehicles, and let's say you're talking thirty chips per vehicle, that's a large enough demand on your own to build your own fab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're you're looking at at you know, 100 million chips at that point, mm -hmm. close to, mm -hmm. close to 100 million chips. Mm -hmm. That's, that probably exceeds, I don't know, how many chips does Intel make a year? Um, I'm betting it's near that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm betting that Elon has done that math and said, hey, we'd be better off if we made the fat plant than buying this and that. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So, so you don't. Look to see so, how many just Intel produces a year. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. They recommend. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Um, it, it breaks up um, number of uh, amount of revenue, but I don't see chip counts. You know what I mean? You know, so let, let's assume that I don't think you're far off. It, it might not be a huge fab, but it, it'd be a fab nonetheless that you control versus having to rely on outsiders. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, that makes sense. Uh, I would I would bet that a hundred million chips would would justify building a fab. Hmm. Especially if you're going to keep pushing for higher numbers going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, if you're looking at twenty million vehicles, right in the in the in the um, medium term. Um, Medium term, well, in the in the long term, you're looking at 20 million vehicles, so you're looking at, you know, something like 400 million chips. Mm -hmm. And then if you're bringing on Tesla Bot, and you figure that you could supply chips to other people as well, I think that they're well within the range of mm -hmm. of 